Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2, where I'm always excited to introduce the German Protoss. In the red, it is Shota, also known as Die Mauer, the wall. But a new challenger approaches. Uh, the Zerg player in the blue, Wayne, the Battle Zerg. A best of five, Zerg versus Protoss series. And, and Wayne has had some great matches. Some intense performances, but he hasn't had that breakout tournament, that real top-tier upset series that, that would put him in that upper crust of Zerg players. At least, uh, you know, the one below Cyril. Uh, so, we'll see if it's time for Wayne to show us he has what it takes, or if it's Showtime's time to show Wayne out. Or if it's my time to show you how little dignity I have by begging you for likes and subscribe. Four drops. And Jimmy, what are we? One, 1,275 likes on this series, on this cast, uh, on, on this underdog story. And I'll cast another series. And I'll probably do it anyways. Thank you for tuning in. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. Hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. I'm excited for another ZVP. Yes. In my favorite matchup right now. Between players who aren't as figured out uh, showtime definitely defines the standard but he's usually the punching bag and i mean walls are not known for being the reckless aggressors but instead something to be besieged and circumvented potentially yeah, but his style is essentially just play perfect and you'll be fine whereas wayne definitely much more of a wild card uh, i've seen some very aggressive plays i've seen some um, more macro-oriented. I think he favors the first one, but it's been a little while. And so far, going for three hatch, plenty of queens. Uh, made a few extra zerglings to deal with those adepts early on, which did end up getting four drones. But otherwise, the cookie, meat cutter. That doesn't make any sense, but don't think too hard about it. But uh, a robo and a forge behind for Showtime, which is about as... Yeah, defensive and macro-oriented as you can get. Shades all the way through. We'll pick up a few more drones. Jams himself in behind those minerals. Three kills overall. But uh, Oracle's looking for more, but the Queens... Not dealing with it. Oh. He's, he's managed to burn out six drones between the Adepts and the Oracles. Just kind of keeping track of things. So, I do make fun of the Oracles and, and kind of coming in and, and just taking damage and barely doing anything. But it is this stage of the game, very importantly, where you need to keep the Zerg under control. Because Showtime does not have his gates up yet. He only has the Oracles for defense back at home. You both are keeping tabs of the Zerg's economy, but also you're scouting their tech. He knows there's no lair. He knows he's focused on queens. And with that many queens and that many drones, even though he was able to cut down on a few, it's incredibly unlikely that Wayne's going to be coming across the map and attacking this moment. The oracles don't need revelation to put that together. But at the same time, uh, expecting maybe a sort of queen walk all in, a soul stroll across the map, as Chrono boosting out immortals. Showtime definitely taking a different... Uh, angle towards the mid-game ground toss composition. And he's got the Twilight Counts on the way now, but an infestation... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Infestation pit at a curious timing. Oracles come in. Is that the first thing he built after the lair finished was an infestation pit? Is it time for Sir Richard and the Brethren? That's a Nidus network. All right, their chauffeur, their chariot, their steed. The Nida Swarm. Oh, it has to be it has to be Swarmhurst, right? And he scouted, very importantly, scouted the Robo, scouted the Immortals. Immortals are ill-suited to dealing with waves of locusts, though generally they're a good solid part of the composition. A part of every balanced breakfast, which Protoss don't eat because they don't have mouths. Just your daily reminder. Um Nine swarm hosts on the way, indeed. So, a direct response, I believe, to this sort of um, immortal kind of just defensive proton style. Instead of going all the way up the tech tree to something like Lurkers, 
Instead, he's going to opt uh, to engage him on lair tech, ideally denying a fourth base. So Wayne has 69 drones, which is nice enough for him. He's building one. And the swarm hosts are completed. I believe the first Nidus has been scouted. Oracles will come by and burn it out, and that is a big deal here. Yeah, I think he saw the infestation, but he didn't see the Nidus, but it's not too hard to figure out. So that first Nidus being shut down means that there's a clock on Showtime now. As he has limited time before the swarm host waves start getting closer and closer. Out come the queens. We've arrived! Wait, we're only like halfway there. We could have walked. Yeah, but why would we walk? Come on, this is America. What, what does that even mean, Susan? Just, just get back in the worm. Not because you told me to. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Roaches, lings, and locusts. The wombo combo here. Or is it? The force fields against temporary units, but he does lock in a bunch of the roaches. The ravagers help him break out. A small zealot counterattack. Racks up uh, just a handful. The queens have popped out again. Showtime has not committed to the fourth base until it feels like he has the army to defend it. So... Even though the locusts are, are definitely a danger to this immortal base composition, it's a bit misleading Wayne's army supply right now. He's got so much in the swarm host, but those locusts are only valuable about a third of the time. Maybe a little bit more than that, but he's able to get a good wave and drop it down. Launches the force field, locusts drop down, corrosive vials break through, but he's just buffering the archons, falling back to the shield batteries. And will fight, maybe losing a unit or two, but not losing an Archon. The Roaches and Ravager trying to break through, but another attack is happening over to the right flank. The Roach is on top of the base. And the Corrosive Biles dock out two out of three Oracles, and another one critically damaged. A big hit there. Able to stretch Showtime's attention a little bit too thinly. And stuff like that starts to trend in the direction of the Zerg, but... Behind it, only now starting a hive. Hydra down on the way. Wants to go towards, I guess, lurkers or just hydras themselves. But Showtime still has his core army intact. No shield battery overcharge yet there. Uses it now and the locusts drop down. Broke through another couple of the gateways. But on the other side, the zealots starting to chop through the queens. They've already worked on the drone count. At 69 workers apiece. As a nice battle continues. Force field with the Ninus Worm. What a play. Showtime. Isolating units with their own Ninus Worm. 13 more Ravagers are on the way. As mass Ravager Swarm host. Well, that is certainly a composition. Cool down base as things heat up. Showtime decides to expand up to the north side. He has a war prison on its way out. The Immortal Archon composition is a beefy one, but the DPS output and the corrosive biles between the locusts and the ravagers are incredibly dangerous. Force fields to zone. Trying to draw out the biles. Wayne doesn't actually knock them down. Locusts break through the natural, but showtime. A whole lot of zealots into the main, and some of them holding the gates on the ramp there. And a single zealot starting to chop through. Wayne not finding the progress he needs with this army composition, but another wave of corrosive biles melt through. Those zealots will be taken out. Showtime backed off with the war prism temporarily. Hive is completed, but behind this, it is this isn't the end for Showtime. It's just the beginning. The tech tree progresses. He's got a fleet peeking and a second stargate on the way alongside plus one air weapons. Though Wayne has maintained a solid army supply, once again with those swarm hosts, but still. Showtime has not made a lot of progress outside of the run buys. And the corrosive biles are pinning Showtime up against his own gateways. Knocks out a couple of Archons. Gets an immortal. Oracle still going to work. Finally knocked down by the corrosive biles. And there goes the air to ground capabilities. A single adept on the other side. But the Roach Ravager, this war of attrition, starting to become difficult here. As Showtime drops under 150 supply. He's got carriers in production. Breaks through his own force fields. Another Nidus. Looks like... I actually have no idea where that Nidus came from. Some Hydras. There's a couple Nidus in the middle of the map. Okay. A whole bunch of Swarm Hosts with them. But the Hydras rallied into the Immortal Archon. Not the ideal usage of Hydras. 
and a, a bit of a freebie there, but the, the swarm hosts make it all the way nearly to the ramp of the natural. And the locust will drop down. Should be able to melt through the static defense. Won't get much more with this wave. But still, oh, actually not microing them. The roach is coming in behind. But the cannon is drawing fire from the locust. And without the micro, not finding too much success. But, Wayne, the onslaught continues. There's not really any anti-air besides some stock hydras here. He doesn't even have groove spines for the extra range. Just about to get hydra speed. But pl plunks down the lurkers. Underneath, are there any observers on the field? There's absolutely no detection for the lurkers. He's just trying to split his way through. But that's too many lurkers. One, maybe. Two? Eh. Five? Absolutely not. Has to build the observers. Finally has one out. But the fact he was able to sit in this position and zone out the immortals is a huge deal. But the time... Uh, the timer is now on Wayne. He has to deal with the carriers. There's only a handful of hydras, so assuming you can fit about four hydras in your hands. And there's no detection to help take out the observers. The waves of locusts come raining in, but Wayne's supply is dipping down. As the immortals are, are giving a little ground up to the locusts, but we'll clean it up with the carriers. And the battles continue. But Wayne has to go back. He has to build up anti-air, but he runs the risk of waiting too long and allowing Showtime to build up that death ball composition. The only saving grace, there's no storm right now. He killed all the Archons, which means uh, Showtime had to bring some more in. Yeah, and starting storm, realizing he needs that full anti-Hydra death ball. There's still a bit of time here to find success, but it's very limited. The carrier count is growing. The Immortals and Archons. Does he have a shield battery overcharge? He uses it. The Hydras try to close in. Working their way through the Interceptors, but the numbers are too damn high. The Swarm Host not finding much effect here. And is there a Spire? No. Vipers in production. Another stopgap. Well, I guess it's a stopgap that closes the gap by kidnapping units. But the idea stands. And Wayne is forced to slow things down. The Hydras are out. The Swarm House. And Locus. Just kind of... Well, that... They, they might be able to fly, but... They can look intimidatingly at the intercept. This is one of the weirdest things. Well. Well, that was a little sad. The Locus will die one way or another, but they'll do it flying. Immortal Arca. A swarm host in the center of the map with the Dytuses here. Wayne, he's been scrambling for an anti air base composition. He still has a lot on the ground, and the Locusts have recharged. But the Vipers hits the feedback. The Vipers removed from the fight are able to stay alive for now. Showtime is pinned to four bases. The Locust will zone out a little bit longer. The Spire is halfway done. We'll see if it's too late. Rains down another way. The Carriers. And the Immortal Archon underneath. But are there any storms to help with this? Gotta be careful getting too close to the Lurkers here. The uh, Interceptor count is high. The Lurkers are pushed back. And this position is no longer relevant. As he's taken out the base, at least for now. Ideally, Wayne would want to fight and continue... Uh, to work his way forward, but the carrier count is too damn high. Wayne has been able to keep up five, six bases. He now has a significant income lead as the main base is mining out, the second base is drying up, the third base isn't looking so healthy either. So those outlying bases become more and more important. And Wayne has done a good job of, of towing the line between overcommitted and not committed at all. Eight Corruptors, five Spore Crawlers, and five more Lurkers really tells the story of what Wayne wants to do going forward. A few spines here, but Showtime shift clicking down. Uh, a bunch of the drones. Easily slicing through. Wow, those charge lots. Uh, very uh, enthusiastic. A wave of Locusts. Do they even get through the shield? No. Nexus still intact. How many? Seven. Swarm hosts have survived. Four went down. So he's done a pretty good job of keeping the swarm hosts alive. 
I don't think we get a kill counter on the locusts, unfortunately. But the carrier count. Six carriers and counting. That's not what I meant, but... <laughs> Ah, uh, the positioning. Coming down that ramp into the storms is just not gonna happen. The swarm host being chased out by a single zealot as the locusts chase the zealot in a, uh, quite a scooby-doo situation. The rest of the locusts sent out. The swarm host no longer particularly relevant, but good to keep as active as possible. Wayne. Maxed out, Showtime patiently defending the onslaught. And, but now, Showtime has the army. There's really no reason not to get at least uh, a little aggressive if you find the opportunity. He knows this is an incredibly hard army to beat. Gets one carrier. Has enough corruptors to knock it out of the sky. There's no mothership on the field in order to reposition more easily. Showtime seems content to sit back and build up a bank here. And he has the army to beat. There are very few, arguably one Zerg players in the world who's very, who are very comfortable, or at least um, consistently competent at dismantling this sort of army composition. And we'll see if we add Wayne to that list. Another wave of locusts, but things slow down. Filling in the air upgrades. Devil's Spire. Im Ultraless Cavern is on the way. Trying to target down Templar with the locusts. The carrier count actually split up here. The Sporest is coming together. Behind it, oh, Storm lands on the Hydras. 16 Corruptors. I'd be very careful with those vipers. But a small ground army, still more than enough to make things very difficult. Mokus back up, just in time. And the Observer! Actually an awkward fight there indeed. Some of the swarm hosts will die. But might be able to push this back with the help of the Locust and the Spore Crows. He did not get stingy with the Spores. There are 17 Spore Crowlers on the field split between these bases. So, well, on paper, Showtime certainly has the army to beat. He now has more in the bank. Wayne has, has been remarkably efficient, uh, at least in this sort of uh, fight here. But he has yet to really be forced to engage those carriers. Another feedback comes through. 2-2, two, two, finishing on the ground for what units there are. The wing. Good angle for the Corruptors, potentially. Mm, can't even quite get that. What's that carrier so badly? Some of the spores not quite burrow. Revelation comes through. Oh, does it? Oh. Feedback hits one Viper. Wayne is trying to pick this apart. He has the spores to zone out, and that's the only reason Showtime isn't chasing the army down. The spores aren't a huge amount of damage, but they, they add up over time. Unfortunately, four of those spores didn't quite burrow. Now have to scramble back, but slightly out of position to deal with the army in the center. A stasis catches some of it. But Showtime is so patient, just carving his way through. The lurkers are here. Wayne, he doesn't have much money in the bank. It's not getting any easier to deal with this. Showtime has taken the income lead and methodically just carved out the map. He's been pounding on Wayne. Pounding on, sure. Uh, slowly but surely grinding through. Oh, still not good. Well, uh, he has been focusing his intimate effort. Okay, now that's just too much. He's He's been working on the base to the right and now taking the one to the left, but... Big move out of Wayne. We'll give up the right side of the map in order to take out Showtime's new base. But the carrier count is so damn high. The Vipers get a few of ducks, but get taken out by the feedbacks. Knocks down one carrier, two. Storms across the board. The Corruptor's in autumn colors right now. He's got a Congress of Corruptors. But 
has to transfuse. I don't know how many. There's only two queens left on the field. The mothership helping to zone out. He just wants to jump this army. There's not that many storms left, but between the time warp and the storms and the archons. Oh, Wayne. Wayne? I, I mean, that fight started going kind of. He typed GG, killed the mothership. Uh, the fight started going weirdly well for him right at that last moment. Yeah, there's only one Arca. Maybe regretting the GG. About a moment early there. At least let the fight play out. But, I mean, look at... It doesn't matter. Wayne knows better. Look at the bank. Showtime can rebuild half a dozen carriers with ease. Wayne can't rebuild anything. So, a great effort in the mid-game. But Showtime just... Persevered. He withstood. And the wall holds. He gave up some of the outlying bases, but it felt like Showtime would take one step back and two steps forward. And that means he's going to end up at plus one game so far. Wayne, though, a great and creative effort. I, I really like the swarm host usage, not just as some sort of all-in cheese, but as, as a tactical option. Now, you can argue... As we go into game two on Ocean Born with Wayne in the bottom right, Showtime in the top left. Like and subscribe for if you don't have eyes. Um, you could argue that the Swarm Hosts actually uh, delayed the rest of the tech. They made it harder to really do anything. I, I don't think that. I think the Swarm Hosts ended up paying for themselves uh, overall. I think they, they were a net positive. But it is always kind of hard to judge as he really. I'm sure truly wanted to break through before Hive Tech. But unlike some Zergs we've seen in the past, didn't delay Hive Tech too significantly either, because you have the infestation pit built in with the swarm host. So you already have that option on the table. But you really want to keep them down. Showtime just he's so collected. So stoic. Hence no. But just sat back and built exactly what he needed there were a few moments just a few maybe only a couple more than one though where it looked a bit dicey but at the end of the day not enough so far so good for showtime game two we're gonna open up the same way but this time showtime not uh committing the adepts Oracle. Apparently we're taking about as long as possible. I don't know why we're looking at it so weird. All right, Jimmy. Oracle so fast the camera can't even keep up. That doesn't... That's not true, but... Queens. We'll attempt to deal with it. More queens on the low ground. Already gonna lose shields here. So, a better start for Wayne. And... It's those little things at the start. It's, hard, it's really hard to tell how much they affect the game. But it adds up. I'll tell you as a Zerg player, I'm one-third Zerg myself. So my best friends are Zerg. Um, getting poked and prodded by Adepts, by Oracles, and then, of course, in Zerg versus Terran as well, there are plenty of options, is both physically and mentally taxing. Because if you do everything right, you're fine. And if you do anything wrong, you're behind. Of course... The same goes on the other side for the Protoss. This has, a, this is quite a commitment. If this goes horribly wrong, this Adept and Oracle Shade timing, um, then you're left with almost nothing at home to defend. Five drones dead. Now one Oracle got down so far, trying to burn through more, finds an opportunity at the third. The Adepts, this one little location, that is intentionally set up so you can't cannon rush there. That's why there's that tiny gap. But the adepts use it to jam themselves in and make it very difficult for the queens and the zerglings to dislodge. Well, sentries. Force field. That probe out. And we'll uh, jovially watch, watch as the Zerglings rip them apart. Always fun to watch the sentries. Sentries only have, like, one more range than a force field. 
so uh, leave them in an awkward spot when it comes to fighting over the force fields. Hydra's already on the way. A Hydra rush. Oracles? I'm sorry. The Hydra rush, and my brain slowed down. It happens. Stay hydrated. Group spawns done. 63 drones, which is not a particularly terrible economy, but clearly, Wayne wants to get some damage done here. And this time around, it is going to be blink and plus one, as opposed to a robo. Whole bunch of cannons on the way. He's figured it out. He knows he saw the Hydras, and there's no reason for Hydras to be out halfway across the map this early on, unless you're getting aggressive. So Wayne gonna hit another one of those timing. Hydra speed is on the way. It appears Wayne, he's not relying so much on surprise, but as uh, the overwhelming DPS of the Hydralis. Showtime is putting up his defenses. Zerglings are sent in to help dismantle them. A whole bunch of cannons at the third, but does he have anything at the natural? A single shield battery. Trying to funnel the units here. But Wayne is just headed for the natural. If he can avoid the cannon, if he gets through into the natural, that makes things very awkward very quickly. Now he has to storm. Zerglings inside the main make it a lot more difficult as some of the warpins are committed there. Not sure if he notices the stasis. Stasis is a huge deal here. If he's able to cut off about half the Hydras, the DPS of these Hydras is so high. But the positioning. Showtime. Stuffing him at the door. A stasis catches a couple Hydras. But behind it, Wayne already has a Hive on the way and a Lurker Den behind. So, not slouching on the macro front. Well done, I think, so far. From both sides. Showtime takes a fourth and Wayne takes a fifth. And uh, Wayne, I think, went about as far as he could without actually committing his army there. So that means he still has 16 Hydras with more on the way. But Storm is now completed for Showtime. A big part of dismantling any sort of dangerous Hydra based composition. The Storms just uh, almost kill the Hydras outright. Of course, if they stand there weathering it and easily deal with huge groups of Zerglings. Lurker Den done. Hive on the way. Lurker's already in production. As Wayne opens up the rocks, he knows geometry is one of the most difficult things for Zergs to overcome. And geography. A little bit of both. Now, a whole bunch of Templar in the back. Second Robo on the way. Immortals in production. So Wayne has this Lurker-based army. And Showtime is trying to put together that Battle Toss Immortal. Templar, probably some Archons. And the roles have been reversed. As Showtime has an army that could definitely win if Wayne is out of position, but in a heads-up fight where they're on the open field, the Lurkers will shred. So... It's now on Showtime to build the right army to deal with this late game Zerg. Wayne has changed gears successfully. Does he have any Vipers yet? Not yet. Upgrades are just plus one missile attack. He's a lot more focused on the unit composition. As at this point, having two or three more Lurkers, I think counteracts any sort of upgrades. Stasis. Does he spot it? Doesn't really look like it, but it's unclear. Those Lurkers are in an awkward spot though. Pinned up against the wall, the concave in favor of the Protoss, and Showtime makes it rain. Brings down the storms and melts through the lurkers. Absolutely annihilated. And Showtime with minimal losses. 11 lurkers killed, 7 Templar died. How many of those were in that fight? I mean, they got their storms off. Either way, it was worth it, but... Um... Does have to refill the Templar account. A cinematic fight there for the Protoss, able to 
just melt through the Zerg. But Wayne still has the supply. Kind of deja vu. I've just been in this place before as Wayne maxed out with a solid ground army. But this time, showtime. Hmm. Wow, those force fields are immaculate. Locking in the Zerglings. The lurkers will save just a couple of them. Go tell your friends what happened here. And Zealots slicing up the base. We'll be taken out just in time. Wayne can always replace it. He still has a dangerous army. There's no carriers on the way. Plus one air weapons as Showtime anticipates their need. Stasis catches several lurkers in the center of the map. Another Stasis. I think ran out at a very inopportune moment. The lurkers are spread throughout, though. Showtime trying to come in. Who's flanking who here? The Hydra is trying to box out the Templar from the low ground. Lurkers going every which way, but Showtime with a 270 degree surround. The Immortals punching their way through. The detection? It looks like it's... it's wait? He ran out of the... There were no observers left. In the Lurkers pop up. A bit of a Zerg horror story there. As the Protoss realize they don't have enough left. The fight started so well. But Showtime unable to finish it. And now Wayne is cutting off the bases. He has reinforcements on the way. Showtime needs to deal with this sooner rather than later. Or it's going to become more and more difficult to deal with the Lurkers. Does he have the Templar? He's so patient, but doesn't have any Templar in position to storm. So now Wayne dunks himself down and is outright cutting off the bases. I'm sure he's looking... He's scouring for Templar, trying to make sure they're not there. And without them, there's nothing that really breaks up this, uh, uh, this thorny nest of lurkers. Now, the gateways have been ripped apart. The Nexus is getting sliced up. Zerglings will match the Zealots, who were finally able to finish off that base. But Wayne sets his sights on Showtime's floor. And Showtime is running out of opportunity. Here we go. Revelation across the board. Any shield battery overcharged? Not quite, but the Lurkers, their fire is not concentrated, but he loses detection again. Where are the Revelations? He's in the range of the cannons here. He desperate. He need the Oracles don't have energy. I don't know how they run out. He can't actually see all the Lurkers. It's an absolute disaster. He's killing what Lurkers he can see, but... The lack of observers and the inconsistent revelations are absolutely killing Showtime right now. If he was able to collapse on that army and actually see it to kill it, you can't just go stop it on the ground and be like, is there a lurker down there? You know exactly where it is, but you can't stop it. At least not with these units. He will clean up the lurkers. And despite how much of a struggle it was to get the detection that he needed, still... A solid army supply out of Showtime, and he's got plus three, plus one. And the Hydras have a death wish, or at least a miss rally point, which could easily be misinterpreted. So, despite how poorly those fights, well, ended up for Showtime, that just tells you how badly it would have gone if he, he could see the Lurkers the whole time. He still has a core of seven Immortals. There are 12 Lurkers on the field. Make no mistake, Wayne did a lot of damage, and he still has a solid economy. It looks like Showtime again must hold, as Wayne continues to batter him. But unfortunately, for D. Mawa, this time, there's no carriers to save him. This time, it's going to be just ground versus ground. And we'll see if Showtime has enough left to fight. Again, shield battery overcharged, but the battery... Is cross hatched immediately. Target fires down the observers. Wayne with quite a focus on them. The immortals slide forward. Needs to keep those revelations. The storms, but the lurker count is so damn high. The immortals found a good position. They're still bashing through, but the immortal count dwindles. Eh. Wayne down to 130. Showtime 100 supply. He needs the immortals, though. The Immortals are the backbone of the Protoss. And right now, the only spines are the ones that the Lurkers are throwing out. Two Immortals is not going to be enough. 
Wayne is winning these trades. If only just. Mostly because he has the economy to fall back on. Showtime has not found any opportunity to do counter damage. And that means Wayne is the one left with the rest of the map. Lurker comes in, forces a response. 89 drones for Wayne now. A very thin path for Showtime to survive this. A few more zealots come in. If Wayne waits too long and Showtime is able to rebuild that core of the army, that's when uh, he has the opportunity. Back up to three immortals, two more on the way. The Lurker location is revealed to the Zealots. I think a bit of a mistake there to show him that all the Lurkers are on that side of the map. They can move quickly, but that gives Showtime just a bit more breathing room. But I don't think Wayne is, is looking to give him too much more than that. The Lurkers. Yanks and the Archon. Just finds a position. Showtime not quite ready for this. The Lurker count at 20. There are only five Immortals. Yanks in another one. Make that four Immortals. And the detection isn't there on the right side. Slices through. Almost gets the Templar. The Lurkers will be taking out this base. Trying to cut off the reinforcement. Showtime looking for options. But Wayne has been so diligent in cutting off the detection and maximizing the Lurkers. 17 more Hydras refilling. Showtime's army still comparable and he has a significant upgrade advantage that makes these units incredibly hard to stop in small numbers with small numbers easily bashes through the base the lurkers are coming back around stasis catches one the rest well the lurkers are coming up keeping those observers alive wasn't able to take out the hatchery more vipers on the way another stasis to box out he's gonna take out the hatch showtime Still holding it together, doing everything he needs to do. But is it enough? The stasis? Oh, catches some lurkers at the front, including some that are already burrowed awkwardly. And the bio ball of Zerg is actually forced back with no vipers to help dismantle the army. Uh, the lurkers are, uh, don't really have a match for the immortal archon. It looks like a few free lurkers here. Showtime gonna try to take another base to the north side. Plus three attack and a greater spire on the way as Wayne starting to realize again he hasn't been able to quite break the wall. The lurkers are good, but actually Wayne doesn't have money in the bank. So he's spending it all on the tech here. Showtime. His income. He has only for a moment. He's effectively been... And now he's long distance mining. There are nine Archons, four Immortals, seven High Templar, and 18 Zealots. But now, I love that positioning on the spines. Kind of lean there. The Greater Spire is a decisive move. This is essentially doing what Showtime did in the last game. Oh, saves the Archon. With all its HP, all 10. Well, actually, I think it's at nine. Yeah. I take it back. It's at 10. But when backed up against the wall, Showtime turns around and looks in the mirror. More upgrades in the air. Wayne, I, I think Showtime has to be a bit suspicious about why Wayne isn't attacking anymore. But at the same time, can you switch to Carriers or Tempest? Does he even have a fleet beacon? No. Wow. Look at all those gates. The I haven't even taken any time to appreciate Showtime's... Well, he, he actually kind of scrambled to rebuild some gates. He gets a Zergling in, Wayne does. And it, I'm sure scouting for Fleet Beacon, though. Probably not. Surprised he got this far. So Wayne still has the advantage, but the, the gap has narrowed dramatically. And in fact, Showtime now has more army supply. Oh no, the Viper's out in front. Blinding Cloud, good. Yanks and an Immortal. 
a consolation prize there, but Showtime putting another army together on the left flank. Oh, the observer. Don't load the observer to a spore. Oh no, not an ideal choice. Definitely not a choice at all, but losing track of some of these units, the Templar die immediately, Showtime, no. Well, this is a costly fight for both sides. As Showtime loses a significant chunk of his core army that's going to be hard to rebuild for very little cost. But at the same time, Wayne loses much of his economy and is caught out of position and will lose another base, one that was softened up by his own vipers. Hydras getting melted on Lurker. It feels like Showtime has retaken the driver's seat. As Wayne is drones. Why are they here? Slaughtered mercilessly. Wayne down to 42 workers, and that's not a solution to much here. Showtime has re expanded. He's got two fresh bases. And has again at this late hour retaken the lead. Oh my. Wow, those. There are now 32 lurkers on the field. That is approaching a record. But the, the lurkers all dunk down. The storms don't stack, but they do soften them up. Does Showtime have what it takes to deal with an army that is essentially just lurk? Oh no! Some of the army caught out. There's a few corruptors, I think, that are mostly here to knock down observers. There's some observers on the left. More lurkers getting absolutely lambasted here. But there's still so many lurkers on the field. The problem is Showtime has flipped the script when it comes to the income. Oh my, Immortal's blasting through. But if he's able to flank, the lurker flanks. So many lurkers have died. 68 lurkers dead. And more to come. But Wayne, for the first time in quite a while. Wow, he's actually able to take out so many of these units. The Corruptor even getting involved. The flank doing more damage than it looked like there. Showtime down. He's losing so much army supply. He's coming around the corner into the Lurkers, which is stacking up his units, but Showtime just taps out. Another bit of an odd GG timing, similar to last game, but the thing is, Showtime just bled out too many units. If we go to the Showtime cam during those last fights, he sees the Lurkers, he wants to fight these. He doesn't realize in this fight how many more there are behind, again. It's the Lurker count kind of popping up that catches him off guard. And Wayne, this time around, so close, both of these two. 77 dead Lurkers, 26 dead Archons, 25 Templars, 16 Immortals. Near even resources lost. But Wayne is able to hold on and tie the series up. Wow. Well, evenly matched here. Both incredibly good, but not perfect. And uh, those little imperfections. Well, smoothing things out. Think, what? Unlike that sentence. Why say many word when few word do trick? Like, subscribe. Well, we're just getting started. Best of five, one to one. So a best of three left as we move in. Oh no. Gimme. That's not where that's supposed to be. Wayne has expanded to Showtime's natural and his own natural. He's got two naturies here. Will he go for the evil block? I don't know if he tried it, but... 
So, Showtime brings down five probabilities of it. And Wayne clearly, that's not intended to finish and become like a production facility, but instead to kind of turn the tables on the Protoss and their uh, base blocking. But, now Wayne is going to just take a third. I'm behind it there. So, this leaves us in an interesting spot. It's always... So, economically... I, w I think it's not quite worth it. Um, it really depends on how long you're able to block, whether it slows down their build. But... It definitely changes the game in a way that you might have more experience with. Problem is, though... Every larva is now very precious. Every drone is incredibly precious. Yes, my precious. As Wayne only has 23 drones. But the Zerglings get the wraparound and rip apart the Adept. A big win there at this stage of the game when you have almost no way to catch Adepts off creep. So very important for Wayne to get that Adept and make sure he minimizes the potential. The dr oh yeah, the drone's still in the main, but... Uh, he's on the patrol path thing. We'll see if Showtime... He's not going to go for it. All right. Yeah, taking a look around. Wayne will successfully scout that Showtime is doing. Hmm. I have to pay respect. What exactly he expected him to do. Gonna go Oracle. A whole bunch of speed. He got speed rather quick for someone going for a, a proxy. So, going to have it ready in time to potentially outright block third base. Which is sometimes rare. Or at least have this many speedlings ready to box out the probe. But Showtime not going to bother. He's just going to go for the low ground base. Uh, kind of circumventing the problem. Two adepts more than enough, especially tucked in there. Evolution chamber behind as well. No lair yet out of Wayne, so it looks like plus one melee. Um, uh, yet another new strategy out of Wayne. I gotta say, I'm loving uh, Wayne's creativity. He's brought a new strategy so far every game. Um, game one, the, the tactical swarm house. Game two, hydra timing into absolutely ridiculous amounts of lurkers. And game three, it looks like we're heading down the zergling route after a proxy hatch block. So, hmm. And a twilight forge on the way for showtime. So, very likely he's going to head towards blink. And that means the Zerglings, an effective choice. Oh, he's building two sentries there, which is an odd one. Now, we'll see. A depth shade in. The Oracles... Whoa, get off my creep! Okay, calm down, bro. Mm -hmm. Six drones dead so far. But the Adepts get surrounded by the Zerglings. And will any make it out? No. All of them killed. Showtime. Not quite able to keep control of everything. And will end up losing his Adepts. And that means the Zerglings can strike back. They're going to get a couple probes. Not nothing. But overall, all the little details so far this game, I think have gone pretty well for Wayne. And those sentries. Okay, that makes sense. We got charge on the way. A robo. And where's the Templar archives? There it is. All right. <laughs> where's she done? Because clearly a charge lot archon build. I wonder if this is a direct response to the mass zergling style. There's a banely nest on the way as well. But archons and Templar themselves... Always a great choice. Even more hatcheries. No infestation pit yet out of Wayne. He's going to go for the Rotling Bane. He's going to bring plenty of pain. 
And so that way you remember his name. Bruce Wayne. And it, <clears throat> I think his name actually is Wayne. I'm not sure, though. Or he just liked it. The people who are like, my name's Steve. I'll name myself Steve. Silver Terran, thank you very much. Sorry, Steve. Ten roaches, 26 more zerglings. And no further tech yet out of Wayne. So, it doesn't seem like he has any, any further intentions. At least at the moment. Roaches, banelings. Stasis being put together showtime. Has blocked a bit of his mining with that shield battery, but... A big swing here. Coming. From the Zerg. We'll see if Showtime has what it takes to block it. He does have a warp prism in a great spot. With already charged, lots loaded up, plus one done. So those zealots will be slicing right through the mineral line. A absolutely perfect timing. Wayne turns all the way around on the minimap. Scrambles back to defend. This completely undercuts. Yeah, that was a full select all army panic. I think Wayne's been pretty good, pretty diligent about avoiding it. But at this moment, while well, Zergling speed is done, most of his efforts concentrated. Stasis in some very key spots here could make all the difference. Oh, that stasis, not so bad. Another stasis coming up, catching mostly Zerglings. Not any of the real core units here, and the Banelings are rolling in towards the third, crashing right through the pylon into the shield battery. The probes trapped in a prison of their own design. 14 dead. E the Zerglings, they're not dead. They're just waiting for their opportunity now. And another stasis. Wayne has made no efforts to stop the stasises, and now the Zerglings are unleashed yet again, and Showtime will be battered down. Wayne takes game number two. It's two to one for the underdog. Wow. All right. Well, a strong effort there indeed. Wayne able to break through in a decisive timing. I thought Showtime had uh, at least enough to keep him busy on the other side of the map, but with no storm and... Honestly, that they just didn't have the units. I think you kind of need Storm against that, or uh, some sort of reliable splash damage that isn't just two or three Archons. But all the little details, that's what that early game kind of back and forth is all about. Wayne was able to keep the Adepts busy. He was able to keep pressure on the bases, and that means he had uh, a, lot of, a lot more leeway to find a timing in the mid-game. Uh, another 30 seconds or so. Showtime has more stasises. He has another couple warpins. Maybe it looks different, but... Um, uh, that's that's those details later. The early game manifests itself later on, especially in this matchup. Like, you lose an oracle, that doesn't immediately hurt you. But it's going to take a little bit longer and be a little bit less safe. You lose the adepts. And the Zerg doesn't have to build Zerglings again for quite a while. So they can get more drones, which makes it... Uh, gives them a stronger economy, which then kind of springboards into that sort of attack. So, that's why these little exchanges back and forth... Um, are uh, so important in the early game. I joke about how we see the same exchange every time. It's just we figured out kind of the margins... And the thing is, it's not, a, it's not, um, it's kind of like a tug of war situation. Maybe not even like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's what we'll go with. Where you give up, you, you try to pull too early and they'll pull back harder. That kind of situation. But if you're able to get enough momentum, you might be able to carry it through. I'll come up with a better, anal there are better analogies. It's not, it's not quite a give-and-take exactly like that. There's a whole lot more factors involved. Those adepts. Let's get caught and killed. Showtime. These are, these are things. It's not good. Not ideal. 
One drone for two adepts. Not a mathematician, but... The numbers don't lie, and they spell disaster for you! And now the Zerglings can just come across the map and potentially deny the third base? At least make it a little more difficult. He goes straight for the probe. They lose the Zerglings, but... Delays the third, gets a probe. Showtime will be able to slap it down now, but... And behind it? A bunch more drones for Wayne. So looking good. I'm going into match point. Honestly, it's been a while since we've seen such a just outright timing like that. Usually there's a kicker. There's like Queen Drop or Nidus or Quick Hive or... But just straight up, like all out Roachling Bane. And Showtime crumbled under the weight of it. Oracle's headed towards the mag. Sliding by. Good Oracle Micro. Gets three. Adepts stand angrily by while they can no longer see that creep tumor. Robo and Forge behind the, the, the Stargate this time for Showtime. So back to a more, um, not exactly passive, but at least defensive style. You just simply don't have the aggressive opportunity with the Robo. None of your units can teleport. Well, the, the War Prism, but without blink and charge and or charge, you're not going to find too many opportunities early. Stasis catches four drones. Not bad. Not great, not terrible. Twilight's on the way now, but Showtime clearly trying to play his most defensive game. Oracle. I'm gonna go hang out over that dramatic walkway over there. Never really looked back there. Goes on down there. A Reaper's just... That's the Reaper escape route. A Spire. Again. A complete... That's gotta be for Mutas. Did he see it? If he's looking, like, that's kind of an odd... Okay, now he sees it. He definitely sees it now. Right? He's not building any Phoenixes. Showtime. Even the revelated drones here. Oh, he's gotta know. Now, now the mind games begin. Wayne, I think, assumes he saw it. So, okay, now the Phoenix has started. He spotted it. Maybe it was a fly block. Actually, it is a fly block. Ten mutas on the way. Wow. So four games and four entirely different strategies out of Wayne. Four, but all looking for that layer tech timing. That's the consistent trend. But a new angle added. The problem is, with any preparation at all, Mutas will find a hallucinated Phoenix and take it out. And we'll confirm the well, not so much suspicions as uh, preparations. And now the Mutas really need at least some time to keep the Protoss at bay. Problem is, four or five phoenixes is enough to essentially deny near infinite mute. Oh, the oracle! Uh, a small consolation prize here. Or prism. Fleet beacons on the way. Wayne is doubling down. He's got plus one ranged or plus one air attack on the way. He's got more mutas in production. He's got 20 of them on the field or flying over. It. And the assimilator. Going to be taken out. Small damage, but takes out one Phoenix. The splash damage itself from the Glaives there gets two. 
All right, Showtime taking a bit too much here. The Muta count is growing so dramatically. The Zerglings are trying to come in. Showtime really struggling to keep these Phoenixes alive. Having a tough time with the Micro. And I, uh, the Phoenix count is just, I mean, the Muta count is so damn high. A single Archon hit is devastating damage. Another Cyber Core uh, has to be rebuilt. Nine more Mutas. All right. Well, hallucinated Phoenixes. Um, did they work? Did he actually try to target them? Down goes an Oracle. The Mutas. Well, he's got Phoenix range on the way, so Showtime has taken this very seriously. And there's only Zerglings on the ground. There's no Hive behind this for Wayne, so he, he has to get some damage relatively soon. I think he noticed the stasis. It's not clear, but the Phoenix is not paying attention. Loses another one. Wayne trying to decide where he wants to attack, killing 10 probes in this onslaught here, but Phoenix range is done, and Showtime still has 77 probes behind the Mutas. Are uh, onto the third base. Uh, no, the army is headed out. A bit of a disjointed game. As Showtime is attacking across, he's hitting the gold base. Well, the Mutas and the Zerglings are at Showtime's third. The gold base will get taken out by just Immortals and Zealots. The Mutas would have to come back home to defend, though, in order to deal with that. The Archons helping with a lot of the Zerglings. The Phoenix count is high enough. The Muta count down to 11. Showtime, 142 supply, and he's supply blocked, losing that Nexus. The Phoenix is still dueling in the skies. But now the Mutas. I think he needs some Corruptors. Again, another back and forth battle. But Showtime still has 76 probes. And Wayne, did, he's building a second road one. He may not remember he, he built the first one. That happens sometimes. I think he built the first one as a decoy for the Mutas. Well, here come the Zerglings again, but that's Stasis! Oh, he noticed at the last second. A little bit... a oh, great warp in there to funnel the Zerglings. And Showtime's army is coming together. The Zerglings come in the wrong side. A few Corruptors in the mix here. In order to box out... Oh, the, um, the Archon's getting surrounded! Most of them taken down, but the Muta count is thinned out, and the Zerglings are cut to pieces. Wayne with 17 roaches in production. He maintains a supply lead. Does he have the economy? Yes, he, he still has the base. Taking out the third was a big blow to Showtime's economy. But again, the wall holds. At least for now. Missile attacks, level one. Ooh, what was that? Is that a prism? I think so. Just kind of trying to hide, but doesn't quite find it. The Corruptor zoning out, but plus one air is now done for the Phoenixes. Which helps out a lot against the Corruptors especially. Is Blink on the ground? He doesn't have Blink for the Stalkers, but at this point, the Immortals fighting an overwhelming amount of Roach Ravager. Showtime just now realizing, pops the Guardian Shield. I don't know if there are any Shield Batteries here. Immortals wandering forward. Archon still trying to get involved. Zealots warped in. The Phoenixes moving by. The Muta count has dwindled dramatically. Corrosive Biles off the mark. And Showtime is able to pick up the Ravagers and put them down. The Queen's looking to match. But Wayne, where are the Mutas? Well, the Mutas can't really fight that many Phoenixes. There are now more Phoenixes than Mutas. He's building Corruptors to just deal with the Phoenixes' heads up. The Mutas can't get involved here. The Zerglings are overrunning on the ground. No blink is making it hard for the Stalkers to reposition. But the Phoenixes fall back. And the... The Phoenixes pick up the Queen's. Brenda, you're flying again! I know. Corruptors. But Showtime has managed to hold the line, and now he has. Uh, the Mass Phoenixes are uncontested. The Corruptors are defense, but they can't strike back. Not with this many Phoenixes on the field and any Archons underneath. So Wayne is still relying on this aggression. He does not have a hive. He does not have an inf- Oh, he does have an infestation pit, actually. So, the options are there. Still such incredibly high economies. 
Wayne dances away. Our Phoenix is getting outflanked to the north side. But we'll slide through. The Corruptors can't quite track them down. Corrosive bow. Zerglings get caught in the crossfire here as the Immortal's able to dance back. Roaches, Ravagers, Zerglings. Mostly Ravagers and Zerglings. The Phoenixes will pull back to deal with the Ravagers, which does give the Corruptors maybe an opportunity. Corrosive bile, but there's not much to deal with there. Picking up so many Ravagers, the Corruptors. There's nowhere to be seen. And now, a bit late to the party, and will find themselves uninvited. Showtime now has plus two, plus one. Wayne still has so much economy that he's able to maintain enough unit production, but a hive starts 14 and a half. Wow, it's only been 14 and a half. This game feels like 30 minutes. What an exhausting exchange. No. Still no blink done. The Corruptors melt through a base, or the Roach Ravager, but the Archon count, oof, sacrifices a Stalker, so the Immortals and Archon. That's just so many Archons. Just bashing their way through. Power overwhelming. And plus three attack is done, plus one shields. And it feels like Showtime has finally put together the army to punch back. The hive's nearly done. Wayne's desperate to put something to deal with this. But this this is not an army you fight with even supply. Unfortunately, they're both nearly maxed. Wayne exhausts the banelings, attacking into immortals. The phoenixes will pick up the ravagers. A few immortals, a couple archons go down. But showtime goes up, and we're all tied up at two to two. What an even match. Every single game has been back and forth on a knife edge here. And Showtime holds and brings us to the decider. Legitimately, one of the best matches, just like closest matches I've seen in quite a while. So that means game five is going to be an absolute disaster, I'm sure. <sighs> wow. Wayne tries the mutas. And at first, it looks like they'll be shut down, but he, he leans on them so long, and Showtime, not quite perfect on the Phoenix Micro. And, uh, that... But it was enough. And that's the important part. As we... Jimmy, play... Possible to find good help nowadays. Like and subscribe so I can, uh, post a Craigslist. Something like... Moving on. Site Delta, the site of our final game. Phoenix, not Phoenix, I'm sorry, I saw Stargate and I immediately thought Phoenix for that last game. I've been trained now, but another, it just shows how much can come from um, this relatively generic and figured out opener. Every single game has started out, well, besides the uh, hatch block. <laughs> but we've started out with a three hatch versus the kind of uh, two base Stargate into Thern, but branched out so far from there, especially Wayne, but Showtime to match it. Showtime definitely um, finding the counter just far enough along the tech tree in order to block him. At least for the most part. But hopefully you've enjoyed so far. I didn't, going in, I didn't know how long this series was. I really expected, well, it's Showtime. But I wasn't sure about Wayne. So I didn't expect to be here for quite such a chunk of the day. 
but I hope I made yours a little bit better as well. Um, you gotta keep a lookout, especially for Wayne. I'm always looking out for Showtime, of course. Because he makes it, win or lose, he just makes for such exciting games. He's kind of like a lore Protoss. Like, what's the most epic Protoss mission? It's when they all get murdered as the universe ends. All right, in utter darkness from Wings of Liberty, the alternate timeline where Protoss... Uh, well, it's not that alternate if Protoss doesn't win, but... Which is literally, kill as much as you can before dying, my Protoss friends. Oh my god, showtime, come on. No, not, no. Ah, uh, not like this. This is so cliche. And then he just builds a bunch of Glaive to Depths. And will it work? Well, I want to talk about what he's doing first. Besides, besides being disappointed in the build choice, he's doing it so well. How? He's showing this same Oracle Adept timing. How many Oracle? He only has one Oracle, which might be a bit suspicious here. And he's actually committing the Adepts, which might be a bit too much method acting in this scenario. Um, as, yeah, well, you don't want to lose these adepts. He wants to sell the idea that he's not going mass adept, but losing all your adepts is certainly a way to do it. Well, there's seven more adepts headed across. Did he? Oh my God. It looks like Wayne bit on it. Wayne has over 50 drones, which is significantly more than you need to hold this cleanly. Uh, 40 to 45 is usually a more comfortable number to make sure you have enough roaches. And that means he's adept's But Wayne slaps down an Evo chamber and locks him out. Another wave of adept's is on the way. Now, Showtime did lose some adept's. He did delay the attack a bit. So if Wayne can get away with this economy, he's in a great spot. That's a big if. Here we go. Showtime. We'll probably complete this. Whoa, he cancels the shade. He's still building probes behind. Very important to note. Still building probes. Which means he does not expect this to be the end of the game. He wants to keep him as busy as possible. But I seriously doubt. Just edging those shades. Wait until that last moment. Oh, wait. A bit distracted there. Some of the drones off the mark. A Deb shade through. Will he complete? I don't think he'll complete any of these. Just trying to keep Wayne busy. Who now? Now the question is, has he dictated the pace of the game well enough? Road speed is about to complete. A whole bunch of stalkers warped in. Good positioning on the shield battery to prevent exactly what Wayne's doing right now. The Adepts are way making their way uh, back to safety. Couple split off. So, Showtime has taken an Adept Glaives all in and turned it into a macro pressure. Whether that was the plan or whether it's just a, the quick adaptation, I think it's worked out. But now he has to survive the Counter-Strike. As Wayne, I guess Roach Ravager, honestly not that's scary here. Another oracle was built. Let's oh, but more zerglings around the back. And he gets the corrosive biles right into the center mass. The stalkers blink out and abandon these, uh, <laughs> the adapts to the corrosive bile. Showtime with a beautiful hold so far. But more zerglings are piling in. Literally perfect positioning. The zerglings probably should be on hold position here. But more roaches are piling through. The Oracle's starting to run out of energy. Shield battery overcharge was already conspicuously used. And Wayne, his units are, are thinning out. But Showtime is running out of units himself. And with the Oracle completely out, another warping of Stalkers. But Showtime may have brought this upon himself. He forced Wayne into this Roachling attack. And Wayne has brought it to his door. Or at least what passes for one. And brought home the victory. Showtime goes on the attack for the first time, really, in this series, at least early on. And Wayne bats it away. 
a bit of a disappointing build choice, though, though completely understandable for game five. And Wayne with some great execution, manages to turn it around. Still, even that game, one of the closest. But Wayne comes out on top with some very entertaining Zerg. And I'm looking forward to more. I hope you are as well. I hope this made your day just a little bit better. A significant chunk of it. Thank you for spending it with me. If you got the means of motivation, be awesome to check out uh, Patreon or YouTube membership. Uh, but I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Uh, otherwise, um, check out the second channel for streams, VODs, more content. You got more hours to waste, I mean, uh, spend. And uh, if you're looking for more casts, it'd be awesome if you find them in recommended, the recommended videos. Uh, that helps out a lot. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good luck, have fun. Stay tuned.